Hello and welcome to the CNBC TV 18's Mumbai Newsroom. I'm Sonal Bhutra. You're watching Mutual Fund Corner. Today we are going to talk about target maturity funds. What are the benefits of investing in them? What the, this category really is? What kind of returns do these funds give? Can they become a viable alternative? Uh, considering the new debt rules that have kicked in as well. To discuss this and more, we have with us a special guest. Gotham Call, the Senior Fund Manager of Fixed Income at Bandhan AMC is joining us now. Uh, Gotham, good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us here on CNBC TV 18. Uh, well, you know, there has been a lot of chatter around target maturity funds, uh, a lot of confusion as well. So let's start with the most basic question. Where exactly do target maturity funds invest? What is the underlying here? And how do these funds work in terms of maturity, investment period, yields, etc.? Good afternoon. Hi. Uh, so uh, just to keep it very simple, target maturity funds are uh, essentially fixed income index funds, right? So uh, they have all the features of an index fund. With the additional feature that the target, uh, the index, as well, as well as the fund which tracks the index, has an end date. So there's a maturity date on which uh, the fund expires, and the maturity proceeds are paid out to the investors. Now, how uh, the underlying of these products uh, are typically in three categories: they are government securities, there are SDLs, and there are AAA corporate bonds. There could also be a mix of these three in various options. So as things uh, stand in the market today, there are uh, typically three types of target maturity uh, funds. Uh, and the maturities range from uh, as low as one to two years to as high as uh, 10 to 15 years as well. And you will find enough and more funds in most maturity uh, ladders going up to 10 years and some beyond that as well. Okay, interesting. Thank you for explaining that to us so simply. Uh, so, l try to understand more here. How do these uh, differ from recurring deposits? Can these two be treated in the similar manner? Is uh, a target maturity fund a viable alternative uh, to recurring deposits or fixed deposits for that matter? So, uh, while uh, fixed deposits or recurring deposits and target maturity funds do share some common features, I mean, most the uh, uh, obvious one obviously being that uh, both have a targeted date of maturity. Uh, the other uh, common feature is that uh, along with the fixed deposit target maturity funds, however, reasonable predictability of final return as long as the investment is held to maturity. However, uh, target maturity funds are open-ended debt funds at the end of the day. Therefore, uh, they also have features of an open-ended debt, debt fund. Namely, there is liquidity. You can... Uh, either invest or uh, exit these funds at a given NAV on uh, any given day. Uh, in addition, uh, target maturity funds also uh, have a more diversified portfolio. So if when you're investing in a FD or a RD, uh, you are taking exposure only, only to a certain bank. Whereas uh, in a target maturity fund, it is uh, exposure either to a sovereign issuer like uh, state or central government, or in case of Corporate bonds, uh, there are AAA corporate bonds where the limit to a single issuer is restricted to 15%. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you end up getting a more diversified portfolio or you get a sovereign portfolio. In either case, uh, your risk uh, is well contained in a target maturity fund. So that, that is the point major is point of difference. Yes, and that's an important point, right? Uh, sovereign backing, uh, you have a fixed return there. Diversification is something that you spoke about as well that works for target maturity funds. Apart from the above that you mentioned, can you uh, tell us what are some of the other benefits of uh, s such a category? Uh, why should an investor look at this one? Well, so, you know, the category is uh, only about three years old and has grown very rapidly in the last three years. So if you look at the data, in March 21, the category was a little less than 35,000 crores. By March 22, that uh, number had increased to 80,000 crores, and by March 23, it uh, reached about close to 1,75,000 crores. The number of funds in the category have also increased dramatically. Today, there must be about 95 odd funds offering different uh, variations of the target maturity program. Uh, this tells you the, uh, that there is a reasonable demand for the product, uh, and it caters to a lot of different uh, investor classes. Uh, the most obvious benefits, like I mentioned, uh, there is predictability of return if you hold it to maturity. The product is very simple to explain and to understand uh, and therefore becomes a great uh, first-time fixed income investment for a new investor to the mutual fund space. So typically fixed income uh, people find a little more complicated to understand. Uh, but a product which has some features of a fixed deposit and the liquidity features of a mutual fund become a great first-time investment tool for uh, in, uh, investment uh, in the capital market space for most investors. 
Along with that, uh, there is obviously the benefit of uh, liquidity. The third benefit uh, which a lot of asset allocators and uh, sophisticated investors appreciate is that it helps in goal-based investment. So uh, one can uh, invest money for predetermined periods of time to measure, to match the maturity with the goal base. Let's say if if you want to buy a house seven years down the line and you want to keep aside money for that, you can choose a target maturity fund which matures seven years from now and uh, use those proceeds uh, uh, at that particular point of time. So you have a reasonable predictability of end return if you choose to state on maturity. And it's a fairly safe and diversified option. So uh, the combination of liquidity and diversification plus obviously the predictability makes it a very attractive proposition for most class of investors. And goal-based investing gives a lot of comfort as well, right? So that works for the investors who have a set goal in mind. Uh, They can go ahead and put their money here. So uh, let's take that point forward of returns. How do we look at returns in this kind of a category? Many of the target maturity fund investors believe that if they hold these plans till majority, they'll earn approximately the same returns promised at the NFO stage. What kind of returns do these funds give? Because longer duration bonds, they fluctuate more than short tenure bonds, right? Uh, so one feature uh, which to keep in mind for target maturity funds is that since the uh, maturity of the portfolio is already predetermined, as an investor, as you move closer to the maturity of the fund, the duration and therefore the volatility and interest rate risk of the portfolio d- decreases in a linear fashion. Right? So if you start with a target maturity with the initial maturity of five years, Three years into the life of the fund, the residual maturity will be only two years, and the consequent uh, in, uh, volatility due to interest rate movements will be much lower than when you first started. So, uh, the point number one is that the uh, rate volatility is linearly decreasing, unlike other open ended funds where, depending on the view of the fund manager, the port- over duration of the portfolio could go up and down, and therefore the volatility uh, could be a lot less predictable. The predictability of the return, as is often touted, uh, works uh, when you hold this investment to maturity. Uh, just one point to keep in mind, uh, like most bond, inv- uh, any bond uh, investment, uh, uh, the target maturity funds, YTM, uh, in- have an inherent risk that the reinvestment of the coupon is at a rate which is not yet known today, which is why uh, you will not probably get the exact YTM. There should be some slippage from uh, coupon reinvestment, but it-, it typically is not a lot which is, uh, therefore, uh, the predictability rate is still fairly high. Okay, also, that is an important... Yes. And, Please, go uh, also, Please go ahead. Please go ahead. Sorry. Also, the, uh, the other thing is that uh, during the life of the fund, being the nature of an open-ended fund, there is a daily NAV. And uh, there, there have been periods of both interest rates going up and going down. So, for example, if rates go down during the period of the fund, the MTM gain reflects in the NAV and uh, exit uh, can be made at a profit at, within the lifetime of the fund as well. Okay, uh, that's an important point. Thank you so much for highlighting that as well. So now that we are talking about interest rates and that, how, that is something that will impact returns as well for investors in this category. Mm-hmm. How are we looking at this one considering the interest rate cycle that we are in currently? RBI did not uh, raise uh, rates this time around. Uh, what is your take? So we believe that uh, rate cycles in India have peaked. And uh, if you look at it even in a uh, broad global scenario, most major economies are either at peak or close to peak of their rate cycle as well. Uh, in fact, if you look at the U.S. Fed futures market, uh, the market is already pricing in rate cuts by the end of this year. So uh, in such a scenario, uh, high-quality fixed income allocations uh, are, are uh, ideal. Investors typically should look to increase uh, the duration of their investments to take advantage of these higher yields. And uh, if there are uh, investment uh, allocations to be done, uh, target maturity funds, uh, like I said, uh, provide a very simple, cost-effective way of doing that. And in addition, uh, you get to choose the investment, your investment horizon as well. Okay, all right. Uh, so that is the take considering the rate hike cycle that we are in and what's uh, what are you expecting in terms of uh, rate hikes or at least rate action going forward as well. Gautam, this is a very interesting chat. Uh, we'll continue that on the other side of the short break and uh, learn more about target maturity funds and the outlook going forward as well. Stay tuned for that.
Welcome back. You're still tuned into MF Corner and we have with us Gotham Call of Bandha AMC. We are talking and understanding everything about target maturity funds. So far, we've understood where they invest in, what kind of returns that do they give, what are the advantages and what uh, should be an investor's viewpoint considering the rate cycle that we are in. Now that we've understood all of that from you, Gotham, can you give us a sense of how much of one's portfolio should be dedicated to such a category? After the removal of indexation benefit for the debt category, um, is this still an attractive bet? Well, uh, I think uh, the investor when making an asset allocation in a multi-asset framework should look at fixed income as a core part of their investment. And within that uh, space, I think target maturity funds definitely serve a need. Like I said, for goal-based inve investing, it's a wonderful tool uh, for first-time investors who want predictability of returns and are uh, not looking to uh, liquidate in the interim. It's a wonderful product. Uh, and as far as the change in taxation goes, while it changes the post-tax return for investors, I do not think it changes the risk appetite for uh, any investment portfolio, right? So your asset allocation is a function of the kind of risk that you're willing to take. And uh, we don't think that that risk should change simply because the taxation has changed or your post-tax return has dropped. An approach uh, which focuses on risk control, I think works better in the long term than rather than trying to improve your returns by cracking up risk. Because in the long term, what will happen is that uh, uh, you you are comfortable holding a portfolio where you are comfortable with the risk. Right? So uh, what the change in taxation has done is it's put most financial instruments on the fixed income side at equal footing. I think it's good for the long, long term uh, investor. The investor can now evaluate all these instruments at their merit look at whatever benefits uh, they provide versus the competition and choose what suits them best. And in that comparison, I think target maturity funds still hold up pretty well. Uh, the combination of some FD-like features like predictability of returns plus liquidity and diversification, I think still make it a fairly uh, good uh, option for fixed income allocation. Okay, take that point. So, um, in that case, what would your sense be? Will pure debt funds or target maturity funds be still better than fixed deposits, despite whatever we've seen right now in terms of taxation regime change? Well, uh, that will depend entirely on uh, where we are in the rate cycle and beyond that, what individual banks offer versus what the capital market offers. So, there might be times uh, or periods in the rate cycle or during the financial year where Investors find that FD rates are better than what target maturity funds offer. And uh, they are not looking for that liquidity, in which case it's a fairly, uh, I mean, it makes all the sense in the world for them to employ some money in FD as well. However, my sense is that uh, the combination of liquidity as well as the market rates that offer will at most times uh, compete well against uh, high quality FDs. So uh, they should both probably find their respective space in an investor's portfolio. Uh, and uh, within that uh, fixed allocation core uh, bucket, uh, both both will find uh, their own uh, space depending on the rates being offered. Okay, uh, that clarification is important. So, Gautam, in that case, uh, can you suggest what would be the reason for someone not to invest in target maturity funds? What are the disadvantages or what should they be looking at before they look at this category? I think the only major disadvantage, so to say, is, uh, comes comes as a flip side of the advantage. The predictability that the target maturity fund category offers is because there is a known date of maturity. Now, uh, the problem there is that in case it's a goal-based investing where the capital is to be used somewhere else, then it's fine. In case you're looking to reinvest that capital back in the fixed income market, you do not know what the rate of interest at that point will be. Uh, in other words, there is a reinvestment risk. Right? Uh, in uh, in case of an open-ended mutual fund, uh, which runs to perpetuity, that risk is not as evident. But in a target maturity fund, because the uh, portfolio declines in a linear fashion, reinvestment is a major risk. Uh, the other thing is that if uh, liquidity is required at a given point of time, uh, before the maturity of the fund, then your exit is, is at the market rates and the NAV that reflects the current market rates. So that would differ from what is the uh, final YTM expected from a, uh, initial investment. Uh, I'm sorry, what was the other question? No, exactly this. What should be kept in mind uh, while you're investing yes. in target maturity funds? 
broadly these are the two things to be kept in mind the other uh, like i mentioned there are now 95 funds in this category so all target majority funds will not be same there will be some which uh, are predominantly government securities uh, dominated there are some which invest predominantly in sdl and some which are completely triple a corporate bond uh, dominated uh, so uh, the investor should look at one the underlying portfolio the kind of allocation uh, they are uh, interested in there there are investors who are looking to do only government securities there are investors who are looking for an extra carry and therefore might look at sdls or triple a corporate bonds uh, the thing to keep in mind uh, from our view is to look at the additional spread offered uh, by going to sdls or triple a versus the gsec portfolio and second the maturity tenor uh, if if uh, it makes a lot of sense to stick to your investment horizon and not go either to away from it on either side so if you go if you are for example if you are looking to invest for 7 years you might buy a invest in a target maturity fund which invests in 3 or 4 years but that leaves you exposed to reinvestment risk similarly if with a 7 year horizon you invest in a target maturity fund which is let's say 10 or 15 years then you are leaving yourself exposed to a market mark to market risk so keeping in mind your uh, goal it will make sense to match Uh, the your investment horizon with the target maturity fund uh, and uh, that there are more than enough uh, funds available to meet meet most investor needs Oh yes, absolutely. You mentioned that at the start of the show as well, right? How this category, despite being just three years old, has seen a massive increase uh, in the kind of flows, the AUM, and the number as well. Uh, Gautam, it was a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you so much for joining us today and explaining us all about target maturity funds. That was a masterclass. Uh, hoping to speak to you very soon yet again. Thanks a lot for joining us. Thank you for having me. Okay, all right. With that, it's a wrap on this edition of MF Corner. But do remember to email us your queries, and we'll address them with our experts. Leaving you with some market opinion from Krishna Kumar Karva, Managing Director at MK Global. Um, stay tuned for closing bell to take you through the last hour of trade. Banks have given uh, very good numbers, but the question is that uh, are we looking at peak uh, in terms of the bank's profitability, credit costs, etc. and going forward or uh, in the next few quarter or maybe two three quarter down the line how do you expect the banks to perform my question is that uh, yes numbers have been very good for banks and banks have recovered from their lows in the last uh, 30 last 30 45 days but uh, in terms of valuation multiples uh, will we see an expansion of further valuation multiples or are these most of the banks now getting into a territory where they could be kind of earnings compounders not seen too many earnings upgrades uh, uh, across the board most of the time i mean the numbers have been good but uh, have the our analysts uh, uh, upgrading their numbers except maybe in auto we did see uh, upgrades coming up and maybe in cement also replacement cycle is picking up and uh, that should be the reason why you will see possibly all the two wheelers uh, uh, delivering good uh, numbers Uh, as far as commercial vehicles are concerned possibly this quarter may be the peak in terms of the numbers and maybe there is a slowdown that we expect in commercial vehicles some of the companies have uh, delivered also on numbers uh, and market is also looking at them uh, positively so there are opportunity valuations have become uh, attractive and uh, if you feel that there are some winners in the segments then they should be invested in a few of the companies uh, have started attracting a lot of investor interest so yes uh, not to ignore uh, them carte blanche but uh, independently i think they should be looked at